Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It is your boy, the SMT. Oh, do I have a treat for you today? We've got N2 testing. Band 2 for NR, 5G. Uh, some of the first coverage I've actually been able to, to kind of create and show how this connection works. What type of performance that I was seeing from it. I'll give you guys my take, my experiences. We'll take a look at some of the testing I saw. Here is a... Uh, you know visualization of what we're seeing on the service mode and uh and how this testing is working so i'm going to give you guys a complete narration of the testing at a couple of different sites i'm in hudson ohio which is probably i'd say about 30 or so miles outside of you know cleveland city of cleveland so a little bit out of the way no problem i don't mind testing for the for the smt nation so what i'm doing here is i'm connecting uh manually connecting to certain things what i'm using is the Samsung Band Selector app. Uh, what I'm trying to do is, this is my S20 Plus running the AT&T firmware. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to handpick what I'm connecting to to see if I can isolate certain configurations, abilities, you know, that sort of thing. I just want to see what these connections really are and what they're doing. So I'm starting here. What I'm connected to is AT&T 5G. All right, now what this means is this is their not their 5G, which is advanced LT, and it's not their 5G plus, which is their millimeter wave. So I am connected to 5G, which is their mid band. Okay. Now, if you look at the service mode, you'll see the connection there. I've got it uh, pointed out in, in the service mode. You'll see that there is, uh, you know, bands that I have selected that it is now connected to. So in band selector, what you could do is you can hand pick. So I've got NR2 picked here for band. Uh, band 2 for 5g uh, when you have the correct firmware it'll actually allow you to select it those things become available to you uh, to the phone and you'll see it says nr band 2 it'll give you a bandwidth it is a 5 megahertz slice it's being anchored by band 12 low band remember this is non-standalone it's not standalone services so it does need an lt connection in order to facilitate uh, that connectivity so upper right hand corner of the display You'll see it as just regular old 5G, not the 5GE and not the 5G Plus. So I'm running the first speed test. Latencies were pretty consistent whenever I connected to the NR side. Uh, they were in the mid to low teens. Uh, so yeah, they, very good latency. I ran the first speed test. You'll see I just I always call back to make sure that the connection stays the same uh, because you know anything could happen, and I want it to be accurate, and I don't, I don't want to mislead anyone. So. Uh, this is indeed connecting to band 2 NR with the 10 megahertz for the band 12 LTE. So 5 megahertz N2, 10 megahertz of band 12 LTE. And here's the speed test. It was really, really good. For a single carrier of N2, 5 megahertz, uh, it's pretty impressive, you know. Uh, I just wanted to show that with you guys kind of as the initial testing. That was one of the sites that I tested. Very good outcome. I was obviously I think these sites have received some pretty recent upgrades. Uh, backhaul is probably on full blast, full bore, you know, really high throughput. They can really push it. Some of the carriers, when you connect to the, these tower sites, if the uh, backhaul, you know, if the fiber optic running to the, the tower site isn't there, it doesn't matter how much spectrum you have. And that's something that we're seeing with some of the carriers. I know it's been an ongoing issue for sites that have N41 for T-Mobile without the backhaul upgrades. It's just not going to facilitate a good measure of what that spectrum can do. So uh, what I ended up doing is I tested a, a, a site on the last segment. I actually went to a different site pretty close. I think it was within like seven miles. So I went over there to test this one. Oh, no, this one was like 3.5 miles away. So what I wanted to do is just test it on its normal configuration and see what I got and to see how it's configured. So you'll see band 12 anchoring, 10 megahertz. And then I'll scroll down and I'll show you guys. It is also connected to NR band two. Uh, same configuration, right? The same low band, the same N2. So all is well. It looks like these sites are basically set up the same way. I don't see any other, you know, carriers connected there. So I don't see any additional bandwidth or anything. Uh, I ran the first test. And I got the 106 by 22 latencies in the mid teens. So what I'm going to do is for the next few minutes, I'm going to, I'm going to test for consistency. I'm going to test to see what type of results I get. Uh, and I want to kind of compile 
you know, several tests together and see what happens. Again, I want to see consistency. I want to see this actually be something that's useful to customers uh, and what you can anticipate in your market coming up soon from AT&T possibly. So uh, you'll see that down at the bottom and, and up there, up right in corner, 5G, uh, latencies again, very good. There's 103 on the downlink and 24 on the uplink. Sorry for that little purple flash there. It's from the camera late night. You know, it's <laughs> tough to manage the, the lighting situation. All right, so I'm going to go into Samsung Band Selector, and I'm going to see if I can play around a little bit and see if I can manually select certain things and see what kind of happens with the connections as I try to kind of manipulate and see what this tower site has and what it can do and how, you know, if a user was so, you know, was wanted to, you know, they can kind of control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to LTE. So I know what the NR can do. I know what the band two can do. I'm going to go to band selector and just pick out all the LTE bands that I think AT&T has that are on this site possibly. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select two, four, 66, you know, 12, uh, 14, 17. Like I'm going to, I don't think there's any more 17 in here. I think it's all been refarmed over to 12, but anyways, uh, you'll see in the upper right hand corner, it does switch over to five G E on realistic to actually call it 5g i think that's a horrible name uh it's actually advanced lte so you'll see that it does kick into 5g e and it does show that it is an lte connection only down here on the speed test it'll say lte for at&t and then it'll run the test and we'll take a look at some of the numbers on the same site if you don't have a 5g nr device not connected to the n2 so what i noticed is that the ping time on the um on the lt only connection was a little higher so in my estimation i do think that even though it's just dss dynamic spectrum sharing and even though it's still nr that's nsa right 5g non-standalone it does appear to be making a difference in connection the latency was clearly measurable it was lower on the n2 dss connection so that is something that I just wanted to indicate that while I was testing and I tested each of these sites for several minutes and I ran, you know, tons of tests, I kept seeing the same thing. I kept seeing, you know, this, this indication that, you know, the, the dynamic spectrum sharing was making a difference. The latency was definitely lower on band two for NR. So am I saying go out and rush and, you know, get a 5G device that's going to connect to, you know, the N N2 for DSS. I'm not saying go out and rush and get the phone or get a device that does this. I'm just saying that there appears to be a difference making uh, capability here. Uh, maybe not huge and substantial, but noticeable. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and connect to the, the N side again. Again, I don't know if there's, you know, any difference in all these selections, you know, what it does to the programming of the connection or whatever, but I'm just going to connect to everything. So that way I know for a fact, this is exactly how the tower site is configured to run. So if you have a device that can connect to the N2, it's going to default to that, which I think is smart, right? You get the 5G icon for customers to see, they'll look at the connection and see if it's a difference maker for them. So now I'm connected to 5G this is defaulting over to N2. You saw the speed test before, downlink in the 80s. I think the up uh, the uplink was right around the 20 mark. We're seeing that as a consistent, uh, you know, metric. Here's the N2. You'll see it as 5G. Latencies again in the teens, and then we've got a downlink of about 124 megabits per second. So it's higher than the standard LT connections, and then the uplink obviously a little bit better as well. So, you know, it, the the purpose of this video was to show you what AT&T is doing with DSS. And it appears that it is, they're, they're doing good things with DSS. It's, it appears to be better than what Verizon is doing with DSS. Verizon is DSS for N5 in the Cleveland area and in the Ohio region. Uh, areas where, you know, they've, they've already kind of deployed that. The difference making effect is not there. Uh, there are some sites that have received massive backhaul upgrades so those sites are running faster but in my opinion AT&T seems to be doing DSS better and I will say that the DSS configuration that they have 
is making a difference on their network. So do you want to rush out and get a 5G device for AT&T? Is it going to make a difference? It is going to make a difference. It is a better connection. I think it's more stable. I think it's more predictable. I think it's more consistent. It is faster based on this anecdotal testing that I've done. You know, I don't know if every market's configured the same way. I mean, I only tested a couple sites, so there's still a lot of testing that needs to be done. But based on my findings, I think that this is something that we can get excited about. Uh, AT&T's LT is fast. I'm not going to deny it. Uh, you don't have to think to yourself like, oh, if I don't have 5G, my connection's not going to be fast. Oh, on the contrary, AT&T's LT is tremendous. Their spectrum holdings are very good. Their tower sites are, you know, getting upgrades at an accelerated pace. Many regions are now getting access to N14. They're 700 megahertz low band. And that seems to be making a difference making, uh, that's a difference maker for their coverage as well as for their throughput and their their capacity so i just wanted to do this testing to show you that it does appear that at&t's dss is working is effective and is probably better than what verizon is doing on n5 which is low band i like what i'm seeing because what at&t is showing us is if you do the dss correctly it's going to help it's going to be better it's going to be a difference maker They've got a 20 megahertz channel bandwidth, right? That's kind of the reason why this is working out for AT&T. And this is something that Verizon needs to address because they're doing it on a smaller low band channel. And this is why I think that AT&T situation is better. Anyways, what I want you guys to do for me is I want, to, I want to get your opinion in the comments section below at any point of this video. You know, I, I hope you're able to identify and see what I was pointing out. Comment below the DSS performance thoughts and impressions. You know, let me know if you've been seeing it. Let me know what you thought of the latency speeds configurations. That just about does it for this edition of the SMT YouTube channel. Thank you so much for taking this opportunity to watch. We appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to give this video a like and share it to all of your favorite social media platforms. Also, consider becoming a subscriber if you'd like more from the SMT and activate that bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and you'll be the first to know when something does hit the YouTubes. Also, we've got items in the description box. We've got a Discord server. The at Tech Twitter handle is there. And there's ways to donate and support SMT creation. Uh, that pretty much does it for today. Thank you so much for being here again. Hope you have a great day and we'll hopefully see you soon on the next video. Peace.